This video takes a look at Module 2, Lesson 10, Understanding Multiplication of Integers. So today you guys are going to use the properties and facts of operation to extend multiplication of whole numbers to multiplication of integers. Um, so we are switching and transitioning from addition and subtraction to now starting to look at multiplication and eventually division. You know you have this when you're able to explain the rules for multiplying integers, and our standard is 7NSA2C, apply properties of operations as strategies to multiply and divide rational numbers. This lesson is going to just focus on that multiply component. So, um, for this opening exercise, I have picked out some numbers for you guys here. I want you to find the sum for part A and the sum for part B. Now, if you're wondering what this star indicates, this star just indicated I'm going to have this same number three times down here. So, go through, uh, calculate the sum, and you can just write it next to it, and then check the video when you are done. Okay, so the sum for the first one, a strategy I see a lot of you doing is combining the negatives, which gets negative 7, combining the, the positives, which is 10, and then adding those two together. So the sum for this first one ends up being 3. Now, if you just went left to right, negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2, positive 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3, and then negative 3 plus 6 gets 3. That's fine. Whatever you did, you should have gotten 3. Now down here, this gets 5, 10, 15, and then 17. So we get negative 17, and then we still have the 6 plus 4, which is 10. Down here, hopefully you ended up getting a negative 7 as your sum. Okay? Moving down. What we are going to do is write a product that describes the three matching cards. The three matching cards are these three cards that have the star under it that are all negative five. Now, product deals with multiplication. All right, it's asking us to write a multiplication um, sentence that can represent this situation. And for here, what we have is negative five three times. So we can write three times negative 5, all right? That means you have negative 5 repeated three times. Now, if we write an expression about how each of the star card changes your score, it decreases it by 5, and I'm going to write it in parentheses, then it decreases it by another 5, then it decreases our score by another 5, okay? Write an equation that relates these two expressions. Well, they're equivalent to each other, 3 times negative 5, is the same as adding negative 5 three times, right? Just like adding positive 5 three times is the same as 3 times a positive 5. Now, an integer that represents the total change is negative 15. We have negative 5, another negative 5 makes negative 10, and then another 5, negative 5, excuse me, makes negative 15. And then an equation that can relate... Um, the product, which is at the top, to how it affects your score is right here. 3 times negative 5 is equivalent to negative 15. So we went through those five steps to kind of get to an ultimate product of negative 15. For part C and D here, I want you to go ahead and find the sum, similar to what you did uh, for part A and B, and come back and check the video once you are done. So for part C here, I use zero pairs. This negative four and four make zero. So then all I'm really answering is negative three plus one, which is negative two. So hopefully you got negative two here. Now, um, down here, I used a similar strategy. I basically made zeros with this. This is negative two. And then I had four, eight, 12, 16. So 16 plus negative 2 ends up being 14, okay? Now, I want you guys to try F, um, 
through L to the best of your ability. It may be a little bit challenging, but I think you can handle it. Um, use the previous example, if I go back one page, use your answers here to maybe help you think through these questions. Um, but when you're done with F through L, come back and check the video and we'll uh, discuss them before moving forward. For F, you should have got five times four. Uh, as you notice, that four is repeated five times. Now, an expression that represents how the fours are changing your score, they are positive four. So it's increasing by four each time. Um, an equation that relates F and G, five times four is the same or equal to uh, adding four five times. Now, the integer that represents the change is a positive 20 because as Mentioning it, mentioned in part G, it's increasing by 4 each time. Um, an equation that relates the product and how it affects your score, 5 times 4 is 20. Just keep in mind, if you guys really use this previous page um, to help you, it's a similar concept, it's just the numbers are changing. All right, moving on, uh, K. If you're multiplying 5 times 4, multiplying a positive integer card is repeated addition of that positive integer card, and it increases your score. So 5 times 4 is equal to 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, which we know is 20. Now, on the flip side, multiplying a negative integer card is repeated addition of the negative integer card, which decreases your score. So 3 times negative 5 means negative 5 plus negative 5 plus negative 5, which ultimately gets a product of negative 15. Looking now at example number 2, product of a negative integer and a positive integer. If all of the 4s from the playing hand to the right are discarded, how would the score be affected? And model this using a product and an equation. So if all of the 4s are uh, discarded, the score would decrease by 4 each time one of the 4s are removed for a total of negative 12, okay? So it's going to, in other words, the score would decrease by 12, all right? You're getting rid of the 4, 8, 12 parts. So that is a decrease of 4. Now, if we're going to write that as a um, product, you have negative 3 times positive 4, which gets that negative 12. You are getting rid of 3 of the 4s. Now, what 3 matching cards could uh, be added to those pictures to the, get the same, uh, same change in score? 4 or 3 negative Fours could be added to get the same change in score, right? Because adding three negative fours is the same as removing three positive fours. So this will be represented as three times negative four, which still gets negative 12. So notice here, negative three times four is negative 12, and three times negative four is also negative 12. So start noticing these patterns that are happening here with multiplication. Now C, seeing how each play affects the score, relate the products uh, that you use to model them. What do you conclude about mu multiplying integers with opposite signs? So from these two examples, what, what I at least notice, and hopefully you guys are noticing, is these two are equivalent to each other. They both happen to equal 12. So what that is telling me is removing a number a certain amount of times is equivalent, equivalent to adding the opposite of that number the same number of times. And just to kind of put an example on that, what essentially um, this statement is saying here is taking away these four, these three fours is the same as adding three negative fours. You're gonna end up with a change of negative 12 no matter which strategy you end up using.
Example number three here is now dealing with the product of two negative integers instead of one positive and one negative. So if the matching cards from the playing hand on the right, so we're looking at these, are discarded, and we're looking at the negative twos. Those are the ones that are matching. How will this hand, uh, hand score be affected? Model this using a product and an equation. So if the four negative twos are removed, the score would increase by a value of eight, okay? Because you're getting rid of these negatives. That is increasing your score. We basically have negative uh, four times negative two. That gets a product of eight. You have negative two four times. That is creating a product of eight. You're getting rid of these cards. Now, what four matching cards could be added to get the same change in score? Four positive two cards can be added to get the same change in score. All right, so four positive two cards is four times two, which is simply eight. So notice the product here of negative four times negative two is equal to the product of positive four times positive two. Both of them get eight. So for C, um, hopefully what you're noticing here as multiplying is multiplying two negatives together ends up creating the same product as if you just multiplied their opposites. So negative four times negative two is the same as four times two. It's eight. So adding a value multiple times has the same effect as removing the opposite value the same number of times. Now looking at D, we're going to make some conclusions from example two and three. So this is the part of the lesson that is the most important. We're developing those rules for multiplying integers. So the product of two integers is equal to the product of their opposites. So we're moving two negative fours is the same as adding two positive fours. Adding three negative fives is the same as removing three positive fives. Basically, what you have here is if you multiply two negatives, you get the positive version of it because you're taking the opposite of each of the integers, right? The opposite of negative four is four. The opposite of negative five is five. Here, negative two times seven, you would take the opposite of negative two, which is two, and the opposite of seven, which is negative seven. Notice the same thing here. Now, what we'll end up building in future lessons is understanding when your product will be negative and when your product will always be positive. But for now, understand you're taking it, it when you're multiplying integers, it's the same as taking those opposites and multiplying them together. Okay, so lesson summary here multiplying integers is repeated addition and can be modeled with the integer game. If 3 times A corresponds to what happens to your score, if you get 3 uh, cards of value A, then negative 3 times A, so the opposite of this, corresponds to what happens if you lose 3 card values of A. Okay. Looking down here, probably the most important part to understand, A times B is the same as the opposite of A times the opposite of B, and A times the opposite of B is equal to the opposite of a times b. You can take the opposites of both parts of both integers and you get the same product. Okay, so go through and answer these three problem set questions fairly short, um, then come back and check the video. So question one just asks you to come up with um, different sets of matching integer cards, so that means the same number that um, satisfy this criteria. So for A, it says cards increase uh, the score by eight points. So you can pick up eight ones, you can pick up four twos, or you can pick up two fours. That will be an increase of eight. Now, if also you can look at it as the flip side, you can remove eight negative ones, four negative twos, or two negative fours. All right. Now, B, we're looking for a decrease of nine points, so we can pick up nine negative ones, 
or three negative threes. Keep in mind just picking up one negative nine does not work because we want sets of two or more. If you just pick up a negative nine, it's only one card. Um, removing nine ones or three threes will also work. For C, um, we want an increase of 10. So removing cards, that increase by 10. So A and B isn't specific to whether you need to remove or add. C and D are specific. Removing that gets uh, an increase of 10 would be 10 negative ones, five negative twos, or two negative fives. Those are the three possible combinations. For D, positive cards, so we're not looking for negatives here, only positives that decrease the score by 18 points. So we're moving 18 ones, nine twos, six threes, three sixes, or two nines will all decrease the score by 18. Because we're only dealing with positive cards that decrease, you're talking about removing cards. That's the only possible way that can happen because it's not allowing us to add in negative cards. All right, number two, um, we have these integer cards to the right. We have a five, a negative three, a positive three, and a negative four. First of all, the sum of these is a positive one. These negative three and positive three make zero, and then five and negative four is a positive one. Um, but uh, the teacher tells you to choose a card to multiply four times. If your goal is to get your score as close to zero, which card would you choose? Um, the best choice is to multiply the negative three. Um, the cards the cards currently currently Jesus have a score of one. Uh, the new score with the negative three multiplied by four is negative eight. If you multiply any other card by four, your scores would be either 10, negative 11, or 16, which are all further from zero. Basically, since your score is one, which is close to zero, um, but a little bit on the positive side, you want to multiply the smallest negative, this negative three, to get it as close to zero as possible. Multiplying by a positive three would get it to 10, but you're looking to get it closer to zero, and negative eight is closer to zero than 10, so the answer should have been multiplying the negative three. Now, for number three, there are two different possibilities. Um, you can have four twos and two negative sixes, or three, or four negative threes, excuse me, and two positive fours. So read through that and make sure you have that as a possible correct answer. Now, just recapping here, uh, this is the key for the lesson. Uh, just understanding that multiplying integers, you can take their opposites and you will get the same product. We will build up in future lesson more distinct rules so you're able to get them quickly. But hopefully we've had a little bit of review with this integer game, understanding these positives and negatives, what increases or decreases scores. Um, and if you're comfortable with that, you're ready to move on to lesson 11.